Good morning and welcome to day 49 of 365 as we fall through the Bible in a year. Uh, we're going we're going to be using the Avenger timeline created by Jeff Cavins. Uh, right now we're in the period of Egypt and Exodus. Uh, my name is Pastor Jay Lutz. And today we're going to be exploring like we always do uh, from Genesis to Revelations. Uh, we're talking about the greatest story that ever lived uh, the best story, the greatest love story between God and his love, the church. Uh, Exodus, we'll be reading chapters 35 to 36, Leviticus chapters 25, and Psalm 81. Exodus 35 to 36 speaks of Moses assembling the Israelite community and saying to them, this is what the God, God requires of you. First of all, to obey the Sabbath. Next, to bring offerings to the Lord to furnish the tabernacle. And then we see him filling Bezalel and Oliab with the Holy Spirit so that they might accomplish the tasks, the, skill, the skilled craftsmanship uh, to construct the sanctuary and there to instruct the other laborers to uh, follow suit. Uh, next we read in Leviticus 25, the Lord instructs Moses about the Sabbath year known as the year of Jubilee. This is... And so there's seven cycles of the Sabbath and every and seven uh, rounds of seven makes 49. So in the 49th and 50 year, there is a there's a special celebration called the, the year of Jubilee. Uh, and we'll hear about the what happens in that. Uh, and Psalm 81 is a psalm of Asaph, a psalm of praise, a covenant psalm. So we'll get into that. Anyways, let's start. Exodus chapter 35. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, These are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, a Sabbath day of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it must be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ram skin, dyed red, and hides of sea cow, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and the onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and the breast piece. This is for the... Uh, the priestly linens. <clears throat> All those who are skilled amongst you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle with its tents and its covering, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases. The ark with its poles and the anointment cover and the curtain that shields it. The table with its poles and all its articles and the bread of the priest. Uh, sorry, the bread of the presence. The lampstand that is for light with its accessories, lamps, and oil for the light, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, the curtain for the doorway at the entrance to the tabernacle, the altar of the burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the bronze basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain of the entrance to the courtyard, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard, and the ropes, the woven garments, Worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred, sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose hearts moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service, and who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds. Brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ramskin, dyed red, or hides of sea cows brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair, 
The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the works the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled them with the Holy Spirit, with skills and abilities, knowledge, and all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic craftsmanship. And he has given both him and Oholiab, son of Ashikmah, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skills to do all kinds of work as craftsmen, designers, embroiderers, and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen and weavers, all the master craftsmen and designs. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the works of construction in the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability, and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offering the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing in the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offering morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work and said to Moses, The people are bringing more than enough for doing the work of the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word through the, the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more, because they already had, because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. All the skilled men amongst the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, with cherubim worked into them by skilled craftsmen. All the curtains were the same size, 28 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains together and did the same with the other five. Then they made loops of blue material along the edge of the end curtain in one set, and the same was done with the end curtain in the other set. They also made 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the end curtain of the other set, with the loops opposite each other. Then they made fifty golden clasps and used them to fasten the two sets of curtains together so that the tabernacle was a unit. They made curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle, eleven altogether. All eleven curtains were the same size, thirty cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains into one set and the other six into another. Then they made fifty loops along the edge of the end curtain in one set, and also along the edge of the end curtain in the other set, they made fifty bronze clasps to fasten the tents together as a unit. Then they made the tent a covering of ramskin dyed red, and over that a covering of hides of sea cows. They made upright frames of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame was ten cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, with two projections set parallel to each other. They made all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. They made 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle and made 40 silver bases to go under them, two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, they made 20 frames and 40 silver bases, two under each frame. They made six frames for the far end, and that is the west end of the tabernacle. And two frames were made for the corners of the tabernacle at the far end. At these two corners, the frames were double, from the bottom all the way to the top, and fitted into a single ring, both were made alike. So there were eight frames and sixteen silver bases, two under each frame. They also made crossbars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west and the far end of the tabernacle. They made center crossbars so that it was extended from end to end at the middle of the frames. They overlaid the frames with gold and made gold rings to hold the crossbars. They also overlaid the crossbars with gold. They made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim worked into them by skilled craftsmen. They made four posts of acacia for it and overlaid them with gold. They made gold hooks for them and cast their four silver bases 
For the entrance to the tent, they made a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, the work of the embroiderer, and they made five posts with hooks for them. They overlaid the tops of the posts and their bands with gold and made their five bases of bronze. And ends our first reading. Second reading comes from Leviticus chapter 25. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your field, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather your crops. But in the seventh year the land is to be a Sabbath of rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your field or prune your vineyard. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath will be food for you. For yourself, your manservant, your maidservant, and the hired workers, and the temporary resident who live amongst you, as well as the livestock and the wild animal in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Count off seven Sabbath of years, seven times seven years, so that the seventh Sabbath of year amount to a period of forty-nine years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, and on the day of atonement sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each one of you is to return to his family property, and each to his own clan. The fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself, or harvest the un untended vines. For it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year of jubilee, everyone is to return to his own property. If you sell land to one of your countrymen or buy any from him, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your countrymen on the basis of the number of years since the jubilee. And he is to sell to you on the basis of the number of years left for harvesting crops. When the years are many, you are to increase the price. And when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what, it what he is really selling you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to obey my laws, and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in. The land must not be sold permanently, because the land is mine and you are but aliens and my tenants. Throughout the country that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of the land. If one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells some of his property, his nearest relative is to come and redeem what his countrymen had sold. If, however, man has no one to redeem it for him, but he himself prospers and acquires sufficient means to redeem it, he is to determine the value for the years since he sold it and refund the balance to the man to whom he sold it. He can then go back to his own property, but he does not. But if he does not acquire the means to repay him. What he sold will remain in the possession of the buyers until the year of Jubilee. It will be returned in the Jubilee, and he can then go back to his property. If a man sells a house in the walled city, he retains the right of redemption a full year after its sale. During that time, he may redeem it. It is not redeemed before a full year has passed. The house in the walled city shall belong permanently to the buyer and his descendants. It is not to be returned in the Jubilee, but houses and villages without walls around them are to be considered an, as open country. They can be redeemed and they are to be returned in the Jubilee. The Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the Levitical towns which they possess. So the property of the Levites is redeemable. That is, a house sold in any town they hold. And it is to be returned in the Jubilee because the houses in the towns of the Levites are their property amongst the Israelites. But the pasture lands belonging to their towns must not be sold. It is their permanent possession. If one of your countrymen becomes poor and is unable to support himself amongst you, help him as you would an alien or a temporary resident, so he can continue to live amongst you. Do not take interest of any kind from him, but fear God, so that your countrymen may continue to live amongst you. 
You must not lend him money at interest or sell him food at a profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt and gives you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If one of your countrymen becomes poor amongst you and sells himself to you, do not make him work as a slave. He is to be treated as a hired worker or a temporary resident among you. He is to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then he and his children are to be released, and he will go back to his own clan and to the property of his forefathers. Because the Israelites are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt, they must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living amongst you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can will them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelite ruthlessly. An alien or a temporary resident among you becomes rich and one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells himself to the alien living amongst you or to a member of the alien's clan. He retains the right of redemption after he has sold himself. One of his relatives may redeem him. An uncle or a cousin or a blood relative in his clan may redeem him. Or if he prospers, he may redeem himself. He and his buyers are to count the time from the year he sold himself up to the year of Jubilee. The price for his release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired man for the number of years. If many years remain, he may pay for his redemption. A larger share of the price paid for him. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, he is to compute that and pay for his redemption accordingly. He is to be treated as a man hired from year to year. You must see to it that his owner does not rule over him ruthlessly. Even if he is not redeemed in any of these ways, he and his children are to be released in the year of Jubilee, for the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Here in the second reading. Our last reading is Psalm 81, a psalm of Asaph. Sing for joy to God our strength, shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Began the music, strike the tambourine, play the melodious harp and lyre. So sound the ram's horn at the new moon, and when the moon is full on the day of our feast, this is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He established it as a statue for Joseph when he went out against Egypt, where he heard a language he did not understand. He says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called to me and I rescued you. I answered you out of the thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will warn you. If you would but listen to me, O Israel, you shall have no foreign god amongst you. You shall not bow down to an alien god. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israelite would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would but listen to me, if Israel would follow my ways, how quickly would I subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. Here ends our last three. Um, but you would be fed with the finest of wheat. With the honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. God's always looking for ways to satisfy us, to test us in order that we might grow in uh, in his um, dedication and obedience to him, uh, that we would not be aliens in, our, in foreign lands, um, but that we would remember that we are his uh, and that he is our God. Uh, he doesn't want us to have stubborn hearts, but to follow in his ways, that he might glorify us, that he might give us joy and strength, uh, that we might be continue to play that music, to strike the tambourine, and to play his melodious sounds to the Lord. Uh, we hear about the melody um, of God and His how he continues to try to... Uh, save his people, uh, that we that his people may not be slaves, uh, but servants. Uh, he makes the distinction in the year of Jubilee that all will be released, all the slaves will be released, but that, that the people of Israel don't actually treat them like slaves, but servants, uh, because they are fellow brothers and sisters, uh, fellow uh, people of God. And so he continues to say, I don't know how many times I said along the way here, uh, that he says, 
to um, not rule over them ruthlessly. Don't rule over them ruthlessly. That's why they're to be like a slave, not to be like a, um, a slave, but a servant. Uh, and so God doesn't want us to treat one another with ruthlessness, but in care and love for one another. And lastly, we hear about this in in the uh, Sabbath regulations when he tells the people to bring the materials to the tabernacle. And again, he goes into detail about how Bezalel and um, Aholiab are filled with the Holy Spirit that they might do these beautiful works of art and design and and God loves beauty. He loves beauty. He calls us to beauty. He wants us to, to cling to him and his Holy Spirit because his Holy Spirit is the thing that brings that creative order, that brings beauty to the world. And this is so wonderful how God continues to show us what, it, what beauty is and how his, his earth is to be created um, or to be treated with, with uh, um, respect. And how we are to respect his things in order that we might show, um, shine out his beauty. My prayer for you today that you might shine out the beauty of God for others around you, that they might see God's good works and glor that you might glorify, they might glorify him in heaven. Uh, may, may your prayers be with me today as we go through this Bible in a year. And my prayer for you is that you might grow in the wisdom and knowledge and fear of the Lord. Have a wonderful day. God bless.